So it's, um, it's about six tweens in middle school going through a regional spelling bee. And so it uses that context to essentially look at the experiences of going through that age and the challenges of facing wanting to win and winning and losing. And it's in, in each of these characters, we're watching them face stereotype and assumption and having to understand themselves better because at that age, they don't necessarily know who they are. So they're having to learn and respond to what the world tells them they are and then discover who they are from within. I think there's something really um, powerful about working with people at this particular age in terms of acting and putting oneself up on stage. To me, I'm much more interested actually in working with people that are not necessarily wanting to go into acting for the rest of their lives or expecting to perform. It's more that there's like this transformational experience that happens by being on stage. And so working with high schoolers, that, that feels very real. I feel like there's a lot of pressure to make sure that we fill the house, that we financially are stable. But I do feel like there is a, a desire for the musical to be something that can happen into the future. And it is not necessarily going to survive unless financially it reaches a better form of stability. And right now it's very unstable. We're getting out there and doing guerrilla performances and we're taking on that we want to reach the community and let the community know that this is a really cool thing that's happening and that it's available to them and then in reverse also make it so that the community sees, oh, these really wonderful things happen in the high school so when I get bigger and I go to the high school, I might want to do that. So it kind of feeds itself. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon and welcome to Hamped Up. This past week, both the boys and girls basketball teams hosted quarterfinal playoff games here at NHS and, as you just saw, both teams came away victorious. The boys team took on four-time defending Western Mass champion Putnam on Thursday. The Blue Devils trailed by as many as 13 in the game but used an 18-0 run to surge past the Beavers in the fourth quarter on their way to a 67-53 victory. After the game, I caught up with seniors Elijah Davis and Will O'Connor to discuss their thoughts on the game. Alright, so you guys were down by as many as 13 in the second quarter. You end up winning by a ton. You go on an 18-0 run in the fourth quarter. What did Harp say to you at halftime? Just keep playing defense. We made a few adjustments, and that was like key to the win right there. Yeah, I think the adjustment, that, that little guard was in a lot of pull-ups, so I think we made an adjustment on him, and the rest kind of fell into place. How much did the crowd help you guys out tonight? In the second half, the crowd started, it seemed like they started to participate a lot more, and we just got, we just got into it. Yeah, we always feed off the crowd. They were great tonight. They've been great for most of the year, and yeah, they, they helped us a lot out there. It was great. So you guys only won six games last season. I think coming into the season, people weren't sure what to expect. Um, do you think you guys shocked a lot of people by becoming a three seed heading into the playoffs? 
I, to be completely honest, I wasn't shocked. I saw how the team played in the summer league, and we were just we knew how to compete. Yeah, I definitely think we shocked people, but we definitely didn't shock ourselves. I think we knew what we had coming into the year, and then we may have surprised some people, but internally I think we all knew we were going to be this good. All right, thanks, guys. Congratulations on the win. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Connor. On Friday night, the girls team faced Holyoke, looking for their third win against the Purple Knights this season. The Blue Devils never trailed in the second half and used a 13-0 run to put the game away in the fourth quarter. After the game, I spoke with senior Lorraine Joensen and freshman Amanda Musikowski to get their thoughts on the game. All right, so first of all, for you, you're a freshman. This was your first time playing in the postseason. What was it like? It was very hard to focus, definitely, but I just think all the energy from the fans really helped us, and the energy from our bench just kept us going, and it was just a very energetic environment for us. So you guys came in as the number four seed. They were the number five seed, so a very evenly matched game. How tough was it to beat this team three times in one season? The pressure was high, very high, but... I think we did a very good job on this one. We kept our focus throughout the game. We kept Kavanaugh out of the game, most of it. And I think we just played well together, talked a lot. It was, it was a really good game. Uh, finally, you have Central up next. This is a team you struggled against this season. What has to change for your next game in the semifinals? I would say we have to be effective on the offensive end and just very focused on the defensive end, just holding them from getting those easy points. And then uh, I think it can be a close game. All right, great. Thank you guys very much. Congratulations on the win. Both the boys and girls did end up losing in the semifinals, but both teams saw big improvements from last season. During the 2015-16 season, the girls team entered the playoffs as a number eight seed and did not make it past the quarterfinals. The boys team won just six games and missed the postseason entirely. So Northampton Community Television supports Northampton Public Schools in a couple of different ways. Um, currently, one of those ways that we're talking about today is that we um, invest and cooperatively support um, the school program in providing resources for students to create and to learn on. So that means that um, there are a number of pieces of equipment that are owned by NCTV that NCTV has purchased and has on regular extended um, loan to the NPS school departments of technology um, and other departments to help teach students to produce media um, in their work inside of curriculum. Um, you know, in addition to that, we partnered on grants um, to that same end um, with Northampton Public Schools. Um, and, uh, you know, we take that equipment back and we will run programs of our own during the summer when it's not being used inside of traditional school curriculum programs. Um, also, we have a space that students can come and utilize um, outside of curriculum um, and inside of curriculum as well here at the NCTV facility. Um, that means that they can come and um, utilize equipment that we have that maybe isn't uh, part of the school program, use, uh, use our space, um, lean on us for our expertise, um, and really, really share in the wealth of resources that we have in general. There's, there's tremendous room to um, look at the resources we jointly have, meaning both at NCTV and Northampton Public Schools, to support students that the schools are currently serving, but also people in the community that, that the schools are not currently serving and NCTV isn't currently serving. So there might be a population out there that can come and, come and have access to those resources. We don't have models for that yet, but I think moving forward in the future, it would be great to see some kind of collaborative program where you had um, continuing education happening inside of the, the walls of the school. And um, you know, we've talked about sharing spaces and sharing equipment in that manner. I think that would be a great way for us to, to start collaborating in the future.